In today's video, I'll take you through a case study that I found on the PMI website, where a famous telecommunication company is running an implementation. I'll first take you through the case study, then I'll provide my thoughts on the situation, and finally we'll review what PMI has put together as a solution. As I mentioned, this case study is available on the PMI website. Please see the link in the description below. So now let's go through it together. At the end of 2017, one of Vodafone's strategic customers requested that Vodafone replace its existing obsolete network with a highly capable, fully managed global local area network, GLAN, in 42 different sites across the world. I'll stop here. What the hell is a GLAN? So I did a quick search on Wikipedia and GLAN doesn't really exist. So my guess is they either meant global area network or local area network. So let's go through both, I guess. Let's start with the local area network or LAN, which is basically a local network. Think about it as your Wi-Fi at home. That's a local network. Then we have a global area network, which I could only find broadband global area network on Wikipedia, which is basically internet. So I'm not sure exactly what they meant in this case study, but we'll assume they just want to set up some kind of network. The Vodafone customer program delivery project team aimed to complete the project by November 2019. The contract was for five years of service. What I get here is that the Vodafone project team basically has two years to deliver the project. Experts carried out risk assessment workshop at the beginning of the project, which they identified as highly complex. This is good because they share the biggest risk, the complexity of the network. One high severity risk was that a failure in the network might occur during any implementation. This could lead to a lack of service in any of the customer's factories or premises, which could affect production lines and result in a loss of millions of euros. So here they share the biggest risk. If you lose power, the factories will stop running and the customer will lose millions of euros. So you want to avoid that. Schedule pressure from the start. Staying on track with the planned schedule weather concern due to a delay in the contract sign off. Typical. As a result of this delay, a lot of design changes occurred before the project was baseline and Vodafone had to accommodate these changes until they reached a final agreement on the design with the customer. What I get here is they took so much time in signing the contract that the customer had the time to change their mind before actually signing it, which means Vodafone had to basically bend their back to accept those requirements in the project in order to get the contract signed. I would assume this is actually a tactic from the customer to actually squeezing requirements for free, threatening the signature of the contract. And then Vodafone is one of the largest telecommunication corporations in the world with mobile operations in 24 countries, partners with mobile networks in 42 more, fixed broadband services in 19 markets and more than half a billion total customers. Okay, let's summarize what we know so far. Vodafone has to implement a very complex network across 42 sites across the world. They can't afford any downtime in production line at a risk of losing millions of euros. The project sign-off has already been delayed and the customer is squeezing requirements left and right for free. This case study doesn't provide a lot of details, so it's going to be pretty difficult to come up with a solution. But I'll try to do my best sharing how I would approach the situation. So the first thing for me is you need to implement this solution 42 times. So the first step I would take is understand what it takes to implement it in one single site. If I can understand the challenges and difficulties in implementing in one site, then I think it would be fair to replicate the same in the 41 other ones. So the first thing I would do is gather a team of experts and send them to the first location. That first team goal is to understand all the requirements around the network, the infrastructure, the real estate, and come up with an estimation of effort of what needs to be done. The goal would also be to come up with the different steps of what we need to go through in the implementation and identify the main risks for that implementation. Once we've done this work, we kind of understand the starting point of this project. What I would suggest is to run a pilot. A pilot is basically a project where you run that implementation, but only for a site or two, see how it goes, learn from your mistake, adapt the solution, iterate until you have a good result. Once the pilot is successful, then potentially you can move on to all the other sites. But I think here the biggest challenge is the timeline. So the team running the pilot will have to really document what they do well, so other teams can potentially in the future implement the same. And that way you can scale up the effort with multiple different teams that would implement this solution at the same time. So I think here a key element is to run multiple sites implementation in parallel. As a project manager, I can supervise multiple sites at the same time. I don't think that's a problem, but you will need a multiple implementation team working in parallel. So they all need to be trained to do the same activities following the same implementation methodology and steps. What I would advise as well, we send a second team or person to check the quality of the implementation before releasing it to the customer. Following this approach would actually allow us to do a staggered deployment, which means a group of sites would be going live maybe each month or every couple months. And hopefully that would mean that we can actually deliver the project faster than the two years initially requested. 
So I think with my suggestion, we're pretty good on scope, timeline, but I have no clue on budget because they didn't give us any details around this. All right, so let's compare with the results, which I want to mention I have not looked at before doing this exercise. Due to the complexity of the project, the project management team needed to work on defining a standard agreed upon approach for the delivery of the project. The project team conducted a number of workshops with the technical solution architects that successfully led to categorizing the customer's sites across the world and agreeing on a standard delivery approach to each category based on its priority. So this is close to what I said, I think. They sent a team to analyze, categorize, and probably prioritize each site to understand what was the criticality of implementing that site. Using a project management approach based on PMI standards, workshops were conducted with suppliers to agree on the needed resources listed in the resource management plan. I didn't mention that, but this is pretty standard. Part of the project budget was dedicated for a work through with the customer's top priority sites. So this is actually what I said. Let's send a team and estimate the effort for some sites, which should tell us what is the overall effort for all the sites. A communication plan was set to ensure timely and effective communication was established. I didn't mention that, but that fully makes sense. We need a communication plan. A formal change control process was formulated. In my experience, this is typically mentioned in the statement of work, or the customer is fully responsible for the, their change control. Tailored project documentation was created to report and control the progress of the delivery. This completely makes sense. We need some kind of documentation. A tailored risk management plan and issue log were set to track all the risks and issues within the project. This is actually quite important and I like that. This completely makes sense because we need to do risk management and issue tracking. More on that on a future video. Dependencies and impact were measured. A regular project analysis and governance model were set and agreed. That's pretty standard. The project team agreed to capture lessons learned regularly instead of documenting these at the end of the project. That's actually very good because you need to capture lessons learned throughout the project because if you wait for the end of the project, you may forget what happened. And I'm not going to lie, I'm guilty of doing it at the end as well. But I will also cover this topic in a future video. All right, so in conclusion, I was not very close, but I was not very far. I think it was pretty difficult with the limited information that I had. Feel free to let me know what you think, if you would have done things differently, if you had different thoughts on this case, or if you had any other ideas about this. Also, if you are in a situation and you don't really know what to do, feel free to reach out to me and I would be happy to use that as my next case study. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you like this format. Merci and au revoir.